Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another episode in Maya 2019. Maya 2019 was just released and I'm having some fun just playing around with its new tools. So today I wanted to go over visual effects. So under F, up here at the top left, there's all these little pull down, a pull down menu and you can choose FX. And under FX, we have multiple choices. The one I wanna focus on today is end cloth. So the way it works is that end cloth has two parts. One is the cloth and another one is the collider. So let's see what we can do. So let's create a table really quickly. And let's go ahead and delete the history freeze to transformations. And then we need the cloth itself. So I'm gonna to demonstrate to you what not to do and what to do. So that what you don't wanna do is have a very low quality or very low poly piece. Okay, so that this is gonna be very low. And I'm also gonna create another one that's going to have higher geometry. So we'll start off with the low, so I'm gonna hide this, and so you can see the difference. So as you can imagine, this is gonna be the cloth, so under end cloth, we're gonna to go to create end cloth. And what happens is that it creates a nucleus, which is down here at the bottom, pointing downward, and then we have the actual cloth node. The nucleus is basically considered gravity. And you can see that over here in your uh, channel box, there is gravity and it's a 9.8. So once I press play, you're gonna notice that it's just gonna start to fall and fall and fall and fall for, for infinity. So what I wanna do is actually impact this tabletop so to do that, I need to let Maya know that this tabletop is passive. That means that cloth hits it and then it will react to it. So let's go to end cloth and create a passive collider. And now when I press play, it, uh, it works. So this is part of the issue when you have very low geometry, it has a hard time being able to bend and fold around it. There's just not enough geometry to be able to wrap around it. So let's go ahead and rewind. So you always need to rewind and play to see the new simulation. Press play and it doesn't really work that well. So let's try the higher poly. I'm gonna take this, delete it. And let's bring our higher poly. And same thing, we're gonna grab end cloth, create end cloth. press play, and then it's gonna wrap really nicely around it. I'm gonna press stop. As you can see, it's uh, it still kind of breaks up around in the edges, but the quality of, uh, of the cloth is significantly better. So the higher the geometry, the better results you're gonna get in your cloth. Now, let me show you a couple of tricks. One is that you can actually animate the passive, the passive collider. So that's actually really nice. So for example, let's say that around frame 20 is here, click the letter S to do a keyframe. And then as it hits it, I'm going to move this to the right and it's going to slowly animate. So notice that when I try to um, toggle through the timeline, I'm getting unpredictable results. And that's one of the reasons why dynamics is really important that you always rewind and press play because it can't, it actually needs time to be able to read t time to move forward because this is a computer calculation that's being calculated from the previous frame to the current frame and then to the next frame. So it needs to know what's happening in the previous frame. So you can't really hop around without for the dynamics to work. So always rewind and then press play. Oh, I think my animation was a little too fast or too soon. So let's go ahead and grab these. So shift, click and drag. We're gonna move this center part here. Then I'm going to rewind, press play, and then see the results. And then it starts to slip. So I'm running out of time. So let's increase our timeline to let's say 300. So then I can really see the effect. There we go. And there it goes. Whee! Yeah, it's pretty neat. So let's say that we actually just want the cloth to stay where it is and we really, and we have an animation and uh, we really don't need the table to move and we want just a tablecloth to just fall on it. So let's delete this and we press play. So what we're gonna do is just kind of wait for it to kind of settle in a little bit. And now I'm having issues with it just slipping off, which is fine because I can fix that. Probably I need to put this back to where it was. 
Another thing that I can do is look at the attributes of the cloth so that I can manipulate it in a way that it will stick. So opening up the attributes, you're going to see that my cylinder has what's called a rigid shape. The rigid shape is the collision. It makes it, it basically says that this is dynamic, that it's passive and that it should collide. So when I look at this, there's a couple of things that I can look at, but what I really want to look at is friction so that it, um, it actually, when the material hits it, it's going to have friction and I'm going to increase it by a pretty good number 100. I really want this to stick, but don't forget that the cloth itself has collisions. So it also has its own friction and its own attributes. So I'm going to go in here and type in hundred as well. So I'm going to rewind, press play and see what happens. All right. So we're getting some interesting effects. It's still a little, the cloth is a little floppy. It is getting stuck, but maybe I want it to get stuck a little bit more. Maybe I want this to be a little higher so it doesn't have so much movement. There's also something called stickiness. If I increase the stickiness of it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's going to stick to the surface. And I'm going to do the same thing for the cloth. Rewind, press play. And now it's actually staying where it is. It's also really sticking here, which is kind of funny. Um, but at least now it's staying where it's at. Cool. So now we have a cloth that's wrapped around a table and uh, there might be other options that I might want to play around with. So maybe friction's a little too much. Maybe stickiness is too much. Let's go ahead and just drop these a little bit and just watch it again. Okay. That's acting a little better. It's not sticking as much. It's still flopping around like crazy. Wow. That's pretty dramatic. And let's go ahead and rewind. Be kind and rewind. All right. So other things I wanted to show you is um, dynamic properties. So dynamic properties is uh, it's going to take some some time to explain all of this. I'm actually not a heavy end cloth user uh, to be able to explain everything. And hopefully you guys can just kind of look into it yourselves and just spend the time to figure it out. But uh, if you wanted to, uh, what I usually do, though, is I go to my presets up here. I notice that there's a little asterisk. And that means that there is some presets already created by um, Autodesk Maya. So I can actually go in here and say, all right, well, I think this is this cloth acts more like a burlap. So I'm going to go to burlap replace and these attributes change. So I can rewind and press play and then see what type of effect it has. So you can see this is suddenly very, very stiff. So maybe burlap is not the perfect example. So let's try something crazy like an airbag. Let's pretend this is an airbag and then it's going to just start going nuts. So it changes the attributes of the dynamic properties of the cloth to give you some sort of effect and see if it works for you. Again, I'm just kind of messing around here. There's chain mail if you want to kind of play around with chain mail so you can see how hard and stiff it is around the edges. Or um, I have a tendency, if you really want to see something, uh, kind of interesting. It's honey. Rewind and play. And you're going to notice that it, it does this really weird thing. So I'm not saying this works for anything, but just kind of mess around and, and see how it changes the dynamic properties and then see how things work for you. There's also silk. So if we wanted to make it look like it was very soft and gentle, then we can get a nice silk look. We can wait for it to settle just a little bit and then I'll stop it right here, right before it ends. Right. So this is a really nice example of what a tablecloth should probably look like, like for example, in a restaurant. So if I want to maintain this, if I want to keep this shape, I can actually just delete the history, edit, delete by type history. And what it does is that it disconnects the connection of the cloth to the material. So now if I rewind and play, you're going to see that there is no dynamic. So now it is just a basic model that you can actually manipulate if you need to texture. Well, that was a quick introduction to end cloth in Maya 2019. Again, we have end cloth and the passive collider and of course all the awesome presets. Hopefully this will make your scene a little, it'll be a lot easier to model a cloth, something that gets thrown on the bed, something that gets thrown on a character, something that uh, curtains, you know, things like that. So. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions. 
Again, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out academicphoenixplus.com for more tutorials, free downloads, ebooks, and so much more. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time.